Hey True Believers, this is Mr. Miracle Comics. My name is Dave and today I have a video about five undervalued Silver Age comic books. So the first book I want to bring up is from 1958. It is Challengers of the Unknown number three. So if you're not familiar with the Challengers, they are a group of four, four guys. Uh, they are led by the genius Professor Haley. Uh, they have Rocky, who's the strong, dim-witted, but lovable uh, member of the team. They have the young, brash daredevil, uh, Red. And they have their crack pilot, Ace. So, a lot of similarities in this book already to the Fantastic Four. This book was written and illustrated by Jack Kirby. And in particular, we see a lot of parallels to the Fantastic Four in this issue. In this issue, Rocky, he goes up in a spacecraft. Once he's in orbit, uh, the ship is bombarded by cosmic rays. And Rocky suddenly gains superpowers. Like the superpower to manipulate flames. Or the superpower to turn invisible. Pretty obvious that this is a prototype story for the origin of the Fantastic Four. This is the last book that, uh, this is one of the last books that uh, Jack Kirby was working on over at DC Comics before he left and joined Stan Lee to start Marvel Comics. So obviously he took uh, a lot of ideas from Challengers of the Unknown and, you know, discussed them with Stan Lee. Stan Lee, you know, put his tweak in there, worked with Jack Kirby. Jack probably tweaked his own, pre his own story. And together they came up with the origin for the Fantastic Four. But you can really see that that idea started for Jack here in this book, in Challengers of the Unknown number three. So in mid-grades, upper mid-grades, you can have this book for under $100. Um, like really high grade copies do go for quite a bit of money, but that's the same with any Silver Age book in a high grade is going to go for a lot of money. So this book is undervalued. If you think about how the history of this DC comic book uh, really affects the history of Marvel comics in general and how, uh, you know, really one of the great legends of comic books uh started to you know develop his idea for one of the greatest comic books of, in, in the fantastic four in this book in challengers of the unknown number three okay so the next book i want to pick it is from 1968 it is marvel superheroes presents the black knight so number 17 uh, marvel superheroes presents number 17 the black knight there we go so this is goes under a lot of people's uh, comic book uh, collecting radar in that it is the origin story for the Black Knight, right? The Black Knight is becoming a really hot character lately. Uh, there's rumors he might show up in a Marvel movie. Uh, there's rumors, uh, you know, based on some people think or clues that the Black Knight is interested. I don't know if the Black Knight will actually show up in a movie. He seems like, a, you know, maybe kind of character. If he does, though, this book is definitely going to take a jump. Uh, this, in particular, this issue is, um, like this actual physical issue, is pretty rough, right? I bought this at the flea market for $3. Uh, normally, I don't buy books in this uh, rough of condition, but um, I wanted to have a book to show you guys here on the video. It is a square bound book. Uh, remember, I've you know we've talked about square bound before. If you take a Silver Age square bound book and you put it into a Silver Age bag with a Silver Age board, there is not enough room at the bottom of the comic bag. The comic bag tapers down, and when you store your comic, it crushes down here on the spine. You'll find a lot of square bound books that have nice spines right up until that last inch where the, it was too tight in a comic bag. So what I like to do is take a golden age comic bag, uh, put a silver age backing board in it, and then store my square bound comic book inside there. And it gives it that little bit of extra room at the bottom um, just to have, you know, so that it expands out and it doesn't end up damaging uh, the comic. I hate to damage my own comics, um, you know, just by uh, storing them improperly. So that's just a little tip from uh, for you know how I store uh, square bound books. But this book being uh, the Black Knight's origin, and a lot of people don't uh, you know 
you know catch or know that that this is going to have anything to do with the black knight for sure okay so this book actually leads me to our next book which is from 1969 and that is the avengers number 71 so the black knight uh in this book it's the first time he joins the avengers right so um if like you said if he does show up in an mcu movie he will be an avenger he was in the avengers as a member for uh quite a few issues and i uh, would I wouldn't uh, imagine the Black Knight showing up in an MCU movie other than being an Avenger. The bonus to this book is that it's also the first appearance of the Invaders. And if you're not familiar with who the Invaders are, uh, they're a World War II team. So uh, if it's Steve Rogers, Captain America, uh, the, Namor the Submariner, and Jim Hammond, the original Android Human Torch. So these three characters were uh, had their own comic books in the Golden Age, and they were published under a publisher called Timely. And Timely eventually became uh, Marvel Comics, so they still had the, the rights to publish these books when they uh, became Marvel Comics after being Timely. And this is the first time we see those three characters uh, united in a team sort of appearance, unofficially. They don't get called the Invaders here, uh, but it's not soon after that the Invaders get their own book uh, with those three characters as the Invaders and talking about World War II adventures. And I really like the Invaders. I think it's uh, undervalued. Um, and definitely, uh, you know, yeah, definitely an undervalued comic. Additionally, again, with this book, though, uh, the story in this book is called Endgame. So if you go out and you Google Avengers Endgame, um, you are going to get uh, mostly hits for the movie, of course, right? Uh, everybody's talking about the movie. But you are going to get some hits that show this book as well. So that's like advertising for this book. Uh, there are going to be a few people that pick up on it just by accidentally uh, getting this as a hit on Google. Which, you know, the more people know about a book, the more they snap it up. And so this book has actually uh, seen an increase in price uh, lately. And I'm seeing it, especially in high grades, going for uh, quite a bit more money all of a sudden. Uh, usually if we're going up in high grade prices, uh, the middle and lower grades are going to follow suit rather quickly. So this is a book, if you are interested in buying this book, uh, to put it on my sooner rather than later sort of list. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, this one can still uh, have legs and still gain a lot of value. So the next book I want to bring up is from 1966. It is the House of Mystery number 160. Okay, so uh, this is a Dial H for Hero um, issue. Uh, if you're not familiar with Dial H for Hero, uh, this kid here in the center is Robbie Reed. Yeah, let's bring that up close. Okay, so there's Robbie Reed, and Robbie finds a dial, and it has a bunch of letters on it, and Robbie Reed, uh, Reed knows how to read these letters, and when he dials them and uh, forms the word hero, H-E-R-O, he turns into a random superhero, and in this issue, he turns into Plastic Man. So this issue is the first time we see Plastic Man in the Silver Age. First time we see him since the Golden Age in police comics. DC had him on the back burner. They gobbled up the uh, publisher of police comics in the late 50s and made this appearance of Plastic Man. So uh, again, not only is it the first Silver Age appearance of Plastic Man, it is the first time we see Plastic Man in any DC comic. So the first time uh, Plastic Man is in a DC comic. However, this is not Plastic Man, right? This is Robbie Reed in disguise. So the real Plastic Man, he shows up here for the first time, okay? This is another undervalued Silver Age book. It is from 1968. It is Brave and the Bold, number 76. Okay, so this is the first appearance of Patrick Eel O'Brien, the real Plastic Man. This is the Plastic Man that had the series in the 70s. This is the Plastic Man that had the animated cartoon and was on the Justice League Unlimited cartoon as well. This is the Plastic Man we all know, right? This is Robbie Reed here in number 160 right not the real this is a true first 
This is true uh, first appearance of Patrick O'Brien, Plastic Man, that we all know. I got this book at the flea market for $5. In nice high grades of this book, it can be found for under $20. It is a very, very undervalued Silver Age book. Brave and the Bold, number 76. Okay, the first real, the first true appearance of Plastic Man. A lot of people don't know about this issue. Still flies way under the radar. Okay, so this has been Mr. Miracle Comics. I'm Dave. This has been five undervalued Silver Age comic books. I'll see you next video.